Pinarello just had their new Belidi bike ridden by Gerhard Thomas in the Tour de Suisse. And this is a brand new bike and they've even used the camouflaging technique that a lot of car manufacturers use to hide the detail of the bike. So it's very hard to see the curves and the transitions in the actual design. So it had that kind of black and white pattern look. But this bike, which is the significant change, is it's gone from rim brake to disc brake. So manufacturers are now pushing forward with the disc brake technology. And I suppose that goes hand in hand with the group sets. The group sets are retiring the rim brake systems and the manufacturers obviously then are forced to make the frames and everything to fit the disc brake because even if they make it a rim brake, can you get the rim brakes in the new group sets? And obviously, as users, we can get secondhand stuff or buy old stock, but manufacturers are always pushing to sell new gear. So let's have a little bit of a talk about the transition from disc brake to rim brake on a TT type design bike. Now, if you're familiar with Hambini, he does a cycling channel which basically talks about the quality control of the modern carbon disc brakes and rim brake bikes. And he also manufactures a bottom bracket the cells that is a press fit. And then, then you actually fit your bearings and system into an aluminium housing, which then he's machined to very accurate tolerances. And he actually claims that when you fit a disc brake to a bike, you're losing around about 17 watts. So let's just round it off to about 20 watts. Obviously, that may vary depending on the specific bike, but around about that mark. And the reason why I take Hambini as an expert is because his daytime job is working for a aircraft manufacturer. And it's one of the very big names in commercial aircraft industry. So I take what he says with a lot of knowledge and information coming from an industry that basically has to work within perfecting aerodynamics and also making these aircraft as efficient as possible for commercial use. So when he says something, you can pretty much say, hey, look, he knows what he's talking about. And that industry, I can tell you right now, I've actually worked in the aircraft industry in the past and aircraft industry is best practice. Push bike industry is not best practice, aircraft industry is. And the checks and balances and the, the real things that they need to control need to really work because the aircraft industry has to have a very, very high safety record. You can't have planes falling out of skies. People then stop buying aircraft and they also stop flying. So it's very crucial that they know what they're doing in that industry. Old. Got a TT bike to a road bike, there's significant differences, and usually the courses that they ride them on are significantly different as well. So, even if we looked at a road bike, we can go, Oh, look, you know, the aerodynamics don't matter so much. If you want to fit disc brakes to your bike or rim brakes to your bike, they're riding a peloton, they're usually drafting. When they have breakaways, they like to do the breakaways with a few people and share it, so they're drafting each other. So, probably having a bike that's not ultimately aerodynamic is not that important because part of the strategy of doing a stage race or a day race where there's a peloton is to keep yourself in dirty air so then you have to put out less watts and you either use that by having teammates to do that or other teams that make a break and you stay on their rear wheel and that's what we get at the end of the races these riders weaving all over the road to try and shake the guys behind them so we know that riding in dirty air is an advantage and actually being second when you're going for a sprint to the line is actually advantageous so when we ride a road bike with disc brakes which is our traditional multi multiple stage rider start then aerodynamics is probably not as significant as in a tt where you actually only have one bike you have no other riders around you and in fact some well a lot of tt events they actually say you're not allowed to get within a certain distance of the other competitors otherwise you can be disqualified so that's the criteria so aerodynamic plays a much bigger part with a triathlon bike or a tt bike 
Now when we look at a TT bike and a triathlon bike, we need to look at the courses. Now the courses generally are not really windy. We're not doing big downhill descents. We're not climbing. They're pretty, pretty flat. Now we have had some exceptions where we've had riders actually change out to a road bike because there has been some steep sections in that course. But generally those type of circuits are not really have like heavy climbing in them or, or significant descent. So the brakes, the actual effectiveness of the brakes is not so critical. So why would you fit disc brakes to a bike when you're actually compromising the aerodynamics? You're losing around about 15 to 20 watts. Now, I think this comes more from a push from the manufacturers, not about what really is the fastest, which is unfortunate. Now, some people have said they can make those gains up in other parts of the bike, but that's actually pretty difficult because where the front disc is mounted, you actually have nowhere where you can shield it and you can't make any shields because the UCI band, those sorts of things, it must be an integral part of the bike. You can't add something to the bike to shield it to get an aerodynamic advantage if that piece's primary function is to do the shielding. So the UCI, basically the rules say you cannot add a shield or a casing over the disc brakes to make it more aero. And the other problem that we've seen with a lot of these disc brakes in recent times is they do suffer from overheating. So you don't want to put a shroud on it because you're also going to increase that problem because the heating is going to be a lot worse. Although maybe in a TT event, it could be a trade-off between the aerodynamics and the brake overheating because the courses are very flat. Maybe the manufacturers can do some studies. But regardless of that, putting a shroud on is illegal currently. So those sorts of things really are not going to be introduced into the bike and designing the bike differently. The frames and everything be generally behind the disc. The front wheel's got spokes. Okay, you can make the wheel deeper, but that's just that can be the, done the same on a rim brake bike. So trying to design the bike differently to compensate for that 17 to 20 watts, which is quite significant, is a bit difficult when they've already optimized the rider's position and the handlebar position and everything like that to maximize the aerodynamics of the rider and the bike as a whole. So in conclusion, although the industry is going to disc brakes and obviously that's the push that's what the group set manufacturers want to only make that's what the bike frame manufacturers only want to make because they don't want to be playing with different systems i would imagine it means they need to have more trains for making the products in the in their factories they just want to break it down to one train where they can make it they can might make some slight different things like labeling to altegra to durace or campagnolo from record the super record or SRAM from red to force and they just add some heavier pieces in but primarily the pieces are the same it makes it much easier for the manufacturing train to put those components together get them packed get them shipped out so you don't want that much variation in your manufacturing cycle because that keeps the cost down so they probably want to drop making rim brakes because that's another part, another molding, another another item that they need to offer separately when once they're making disc brakes, they can just fit that across their range and therefore it makes it much easier for them to manufacture. So I can understand the, the logistics and also the cost benefit to the manufacturers for doing this. They don't have to have, make multiple products like frame for disc brakes, a frame for rim brakes, a group set for rim brakes, <coughs> excuse me, a group set for disc brakes and I think this is the main driver in the industry they want to make that decisive shift to disc brakes basically on a cost basis they put a lot of money and research into disc brakes that's where they're going and they don't want to be offering two systems but when we look at it from a pure performance point of view a rim brake TT bike makes a lot more sense and even if you argue even if we just say, hey, look, disc brakes are better, they stop better, they've got better performance, they cooled out, just say everything was better about disc brakes, apart from the aerodynamics, then it doesn't make any sense to fit disc brakes onto your TT bike because the braking you do on a TT bike is far less than you would have on like a road bike with a road bike stage. The stages are usually very flat. They may have some elevations, but they're quite small. You're using your brakes less over that course. It's all about getting into most aero position and maximizing your watts to get the fastest time over that section you're not racing in a group 
and can draft and all those other things, you just have to have the bike in yourself as aero as possible and get the maximum speed for the maximum watts that you can put out. And that's where a rim brake TT bike makes more sense. But unfortunately, what we're seeing is still a shift towards disc brakes. I would love to hear what these manufacturers are thinking behind closed doors because it doesn't make a lot of sense when you get from an aerodynamicist specifically saying disc brakes are less aero. And that makes sense because we have a spinning disc on the bike. It's the same with your wheel. The top of the disc, the top of the wheel is going faster than the bike and it's not an aerodynamic shape. So therefore it creates a lot of drag. Anyway, guys, leave your comments down below. What do you think of this shift from Pinarello on the Belidi to change to disc brakes and that whole movement from rim brakes, even now in TT bikes, is pushing forward to disc brakes. And that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. And remember, if you like the cycling content, I'd like to hear a little bit of a different view because I like to offer a little bit of a different view than the main channels. If you like that sort of stuff, then remember to subscribe and ring that bell. And don't be a ninja watcher, and I will see you next vid. Cheers.